What up, y'all, DC Bagel Guy? You guys have spoken. Majority of everyone that commented said that they really didn't care how the quality was. They just want to see some DC Bagel Guy content. So, uh, you know, anybody that's been subscribing for a long time, they know. It wasn't always fucking glam and glitter, you know. I filmed the first two year, two three years of making YouTube videos was filmed on an, iP an iPod Touch 4th generation. The quality was not all that great back then. But I fucking did it and I kept fucking doing it. Finally, I was able to get a, a good webcam. I was finally able to get a good camera. and To me, it's just been improving from there. Uh, also, I enjoy editing, you know. Back then, I did it. The first year that I did it was all raw and uncut. No editing. I think the first six months, actually, was more raw and uncut. So that's basically what this is going to be. So any fuck-ups that I have, they're just going to stay in the videos. But uh, you guys want to see some DC Fake Guy content? I want to talk about last week's prom night massacre uh just my experience how it felt going back to an icp concert after a year and a half of not going to one legit hollow wicked 2019 was the last concert i've gone to the last icp show that i've gone to so it was fucking awesome being back at a show seeing the juggalos and being at that particular show i thought was really fucking dope they went all out, like walking into the venue, which, by the way, I love the venue. I've been there twice now. Back in 2018, when they went on the Hollow Wicked tour, they stopped in Fort Wayne and they went to Pierre's. Um, but I also seen Fear Factory back in 2012. And both times, I, I had a great experience with the venue. This last time, the venue, for whatever reason, for those that went and know the layout of the venue, you have the stage. You have the area where the crowd is, and then there's a bar. And behind the bar, there's like a elevated stage setup, kind of. There used to be tables and chairs up there, uh, both for the Fear Factory show and for the Hollow Wicked show that ICP was at. They had tables and chairs up there where you could sit. For whatever reason, they did not have those at the Prom Night Massacre. Maybe they were anticipating to give more room to stand. Um, but they didn't have the table and chairs. Kind of sucked. I always, every time that I went, besides Fear Factory, Fear Factory, I was basically pushed up against the bar as back as I could away from the stage. Anybody anybody that ever goes to show that I'm going to be at, the one place you will always find me is in the back. That's just me. I like to be in the back. I like to fucking enjoy the show from the back without being pushed, shoved, and fucking getting hit with Fago bottles. I, I don't know. I, I've, I've lived through those days of getting hit with Fago bottles. I'm kind of like, I just want to enjoy the show now. So if you're ever at a show... And you can't find me, and you know I'm there. Check the back. That's probably where I'm at. Uh, I know CPN was supposed to be at that, or CPN was at that show. Esteban Mafioso was at that show. I didn't see either one of them. Granted, I didn't do a whole lot of walking around. I went over to the merch booth. That fucker was packed. Like, there was no line. It was just a crowd of people, which typically there is a crowd of people. There was no getting up there. Um, looking at the selection... There wasn't a whole lot there. It was pretty well picked over by the time Megs and I got there at 8. Uh, found out later, Pierre's apparently opened up the doors early at 4.30, so that's probably why it got picked over. I don't know if merch was set up then or not. But uh, I was looking at some of the shirts. There was a few of them that I wanted, but I didn't... I couldn't live without, you know what I mean? So I didn't really go up there to try to get any merch. The main thing I wanted was the, sing the CD single that we were supposed to get for dressing up. Megs and I did dress up. If you have not seen those pictures, you can head over to my Instagram. You can he head over to Megs' Instagram to see pictures. We did dress up, and uh, the sashes we had, prom king, prom queen, made up. Mine's all fucked up. I'm sure people are going to see it and be like, what the fuck? The 2010 on there is fucked up. And, and if you guys are wondering what the significance of 2010 is, that's actually when Megs and I met and started dating. So um, the whole story behind the sashes, though, because, uh, I think it was Timmy. Uh, yeah, Echo Side Fiend as he's like, so you guys just crown yourself? No. We fucking killed the prom king and queen and took their sashes and made ourselves prom king and queen. Actually, uh, <laughs> we didn't even, we didn't even get to go up and get voted for, for that. But that's whatever. Um, we had fun making the fucking sashes. Megs more so than me. I suck at arts and crafts. But, uh, yeah, if you want to see photos, head over to Instagram. Megs has photos, I have photos, uh, link should be in the description. If not in this video, in previous videos, just head over to Instagram and look for DC Fango Guy. You'll find me. Um, but yeah, we dressed up. So my big thing was I wanted the CD single, of course. 
they weren't giving a Mount Holowicken style, which was honestly how I was anticipating it to go. <laughs> Talking with that Coastside fan, he's like, well, they probably didn't have the CDs ready. Guess I should have known better. No, no, I'm not trying to diss. I mean, that just seems to be the way things are going. So, uh, periodically, Echo Side Fiend would go back up trying to see. They had apparently a clipboard at the merch booth that where you just sign your name and your address. So, any motherfuckers that went to the show, whether you dressed up or not, you had the ability to get yourself a CD regardless. So, that was kind of stale. I wish they would have, like, had it ready or, you know... When you got your name badge or when you went and got your picture taken, if that was when you signed the clipboard, that to me would have worked out better. It felt a little unorganized in that aspect. And speaking of name badges, the one piece of like merch that came from that show or memento that came from that show, you got to fill out these fucking name badges. And they were so fucking dope, man. I love that. I thought that was such a nice touch. That was such a cool touch to that show. I will probably just put the I'll put it over here on the desk. But uh, I thought that shit was cool. The show itself loved it. They had balloons everywhere. It was it was a prom. I've never been to a dance at all. I was an outcast in school, so I never went to dances. I never went to a fucking prom. So it was very very cool, very awesome experience. Loved the way they did the intro. Everything about the show great. So let's address the elephant in the room. Violent J fucking up lyrics. I caught on to it quick when he started fucking up lyrics. And and really, the first thing that really stood out to me wasn't so much him fucking up lyrics. It was him just flat out not singing. There were, uh, I want to say it was the Ned game was the first one that I noticed, probably earlier than that, where he just let the music play in the background. What you can hear... And I've gone back and watched videos. What you hear is all the other juggalos fucking singing. Which I've stated my opinion about this in the past. I don't remember if it was in a video. If it was in the comments of somebody else's video. Or if it was in the comments of an Instagram or Facebook post. I don't remember specifically. But I had stated that him fucking up lyrics doesn't bother me. Because I know them so well. I sing them for him. Uh, I, somebody I remember re re responded. Like, oh, that's bullshit. That's fucked up. You paid for the ticket. They should give you a good show. Whatever. To me, the show is the experience of being there with other juggalos, fucking jamming out to music that you love, regardless of whether the performer is performing to whatever your expectations may be. The energy of the environment is what I love about going to shows. So him fucking up lyrics did not phase me one little bit. Everybody there was fucking singing, having a good fucking time. It didn't phase me. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there in case people wonder. I've stated it before. I'm stating it again. It doesn't bother me when lyrics get fucked up. It throws me off just a little bit because I'm fucking singing. And when I hear something else being sung on stage, I'm like, wait, am I fucking up or are they fucking up? You know, it, it trips me up because I'm singing along and I'm hearing something different than what I'm saying. And my brain goes, does not compute. So I have that brain fart for a quick minute and then, you know, continue to have a fucking awesome time. Uh, but yeah, so... That's my opinion on that whole thing. But there is one gripe, one critique that I really want to give this show. And to me, this show felt like... And I want to be careful how I say this. Because I don't want people to misconstrue what I'm saying. It felt like every other ICP show. Now, they did great with the decorations. The stage set was awesome. They had lockers set up, you know, they had a band come out and play. They came out, fucking killed, you know, kicked the band off the stage and took over the show. Shut up, you high school prom. You know, that was the opening song. Loved it. Fucking great. That song was a great segue into them taking over. But then from that point forward, I would have loved to have heard more love songs. They performed Ned and Game. They performed um, Prom Queen. They performed Cherry Pie. And what else did they perform? I don't think there's much other than that. That pretty much is the only love songs I think that they played. I would have loved to have heard more of their love songs. Another love song. Love song. Um, Will Something Something would have been fucking dope. Um, what are some other ones? Uh, Let a Killer. Let a Killer Fuck You. Come on, man. That would have been a dope song for them to perform live. Granted, honestly, I don't think I've ever been to a show 
where they performed Let It Kill Her. So, the motherfucking OGs out there that have been to a buttload of fucking shows, have they ever performed Let It Kill Alive? Because I don't think they have. So, uh... Am I getting that? I'm getting that song name right, right? Off of Bizarre? Let it kill a fuck you, let it kill a fuck you, let it kill a fuck you, right? I'm pretty sure it's called Let It Kill her. I don't know. Them fucking beach bitches. You're one of them bitches at the beach. You're a beach at the bitch, and I'm sick of that shit. Anyway. <laughs> ADHD moment. Over. Let's focus. Uh, I would have heard, I would have loved to have heard more songs like that. I feel like they went their traditional set list. And to me, that was just a little bit disappointing because, you know, this is a prom. I felt like they should have been doing more uh, quote-unquote love songs. Songs about fucking those kind of shits. Uh, and they didn't. So that's probably the one gripe and critique that I have about the show that I wish would have happened. Um, as well as the organization of getting the free CD for dressing up. Because we didn't get one. <laughs> We had to, and at one point, there's probably some motherfuckers that missed out on their CD because Equicide Fiend said at one point he did make it up to the merch booth. He made it up to the, the stand, whatever, and the clipboard was gone. Motherfuckers, like, passed it and just started passing it around, and it disappeared for a while. So there were probably people up there trying to get that CD that didn't even know about the clipboard because the clipboard was gone, or they knew about the clipboard, and again, the clipboard was gone, so they were like, ah, oh, fuck it, you know, pissed off, ruined their whole night. Uh, Echo Siphine said when he got back up there, they had it like tied down to prevent that from happening again. So he filled out, got his, Megs went up and filled out ours. So I feel like the organization of how to get the CD could have been handled a little bit better. I think when you got your picture taken or when you got your name badge or both. I really think that's really should have how it was. I feel like, and Pierre's is kind of laid out, the entrance was laid out a little weird. There's actually two different entrances, and uh, for the people that went there, the area that you go out to to smoke, the last two shows I went to, that was actually where you came in. You came in there, and then you went around, and then the smoking area was where the entrance was this time. Weird. It was all weird. So they did it backwards, and if they would have had it laid out like that, you come in, you get your name badge, boom, take your picture. That's the way it should have been set up. Um, write your name. Put your address, then they send you your CD. That's the way it should have been handled, but it wasn't. Uh, I didn't organize the show. I didn't set up the layout. So, uh, those are my critiques. The set list, I feel like, was a little too traditional. Should have been more themed around prom night and the organization of, of that fiasco. It could have been handled way better. Other than that, had a great fucking time. It was so good to be back at an ICP show. I hope that they continue to do shows. At this point, I, I, I already I already know and acknowledge that the gathering is not happening. Uh, happening. Echo Siphine and I, we were talking about, you know, we're holding out hope for Hollow Wicked to still happen, but doubtful. Uh, I guess restrictions are a little bit different up in Michigan. You know, that's the thing about Indiana. I'm from Indiana, for those who don't know. It's about an hour and a half drive from where I live to Fort Wayne, so that was fucking awesome, knowing that that's where the concert was. Uh... Indiana's a red state. Very conservative, very Republican, and you know how they are. Don't infringe on our rights. You can't make me wear a mask. So, <laughs> the show happening in Indiana happened because, you know, yeah, that. So, we're not going to dip into politics. We're just, we're not going there. But, very conservative state. Uh, if they moved Hollow Wicked, which I doubt they ever will, it's tradition to have it in Detroit. Ah, who knows? Six months, we got what, six months now until the next Hollow Wicked? So maybe it'll happen. I'm not holding out hopes. I've accepted the gathering's not happening. But I hope to see more shows like this. Because that was that was awesome. <laughs> Limited tickets, my ass. That motherfucker was packed. We were dipping in the COVID crock pot last Friday night. And honestly, <laughs> Megs and I are sick. We can't help but be like, did we? Did we not? I think it's just a cold. But, you know, it, COVID culture, man, the shit runs through your mind. Did I fucking get sick? But... I'm going to wrap this thing up. That's my review of the Prom Night Massacre 25th anniversary show. It was fucking great. Regardless of the few hiccups, regardless of the, the foo bars with lyrics, I fucking still had a blast. And I can't wait for the next show. So if you guys were there, tell me. What did you like about the show? What did you not like about the show? If, if you have anything that you didn't like about the show, uh, leave your comments down below. 
Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.